have to practice. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> See? <laughs> they are warmed up. They are ready to go. And so are the bowlers. In the next half hour, we'll explain exactly what is ahead of these bowlers. There's some money. There's prestige in winning. And as you can tell, Tom and Tony Marie have been going on for weeks now, so they can keep it going. Good Christmas money in the middle of the summer. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is yours. Ladies first, and Tony Marie first. It's Denise Kelly. Each woman with a seven drop of the first ball. Tony Marie doesn't get our first mark of the day. What oh, great. I'll tell you what, Denise came within an inch of doing it. So nines get us going here. First box, candlepin doubles, mixed doubles. The ladies will bowl the first five boxes. The men will take us from six through ten. It is the cumulative score after two strings of bowling that decides who our champion is. Diamond right side, left. That's a spare lead from Tony Marie. Right on the head pin is Denise. Looks like a spread eagle. pin action and picked up half the pins that were standing. Tony Marie takes it out with a 10. Ten as well for Denise Keller. Move to the third box, first string. The lead is zero. Identical bowling for the first two strings. Tony Marie's average is 116. She has a high single of 179 and a triple of 469. Denise Kelly's average is 117, a, with a triple of 412 and a high of 170. And she and her partner, Tommy Olson, have bowled above the competition in the past five weeks. That's why they're being there. What we're waiting for is a wiggling pin. You just, you just saw what Tony Marie was looking at. All started right for Denise and stayed right. Didn't strike it right, if you will. So Tony Marie goes out with a 10, second consecutive 10, and Denise Kelly goes out with a nine. Fourth box, first string. Although there was a difficult leave. Denise Kelly. A nice pickup on what was a difficult leave as well. Tony Marie threw it right between them. Right between the little space there for an eight in the fourth box. Denise Kelly with a nice 10, a nice out, and uh, she has taken a one pin advantage. After the third box, it was one pin for the Baldinelli Ulster team. Now, after the fourth, it's one pin for the Kelly Johnson team. The 10 is wiggling and falls over. Right in the pocket. Spare lead. A lot of pin action. I'm surprised the pin that went flying didn't take out the lone soldier, but it didn't. First mark of the day. And Tony Marie goes out with a 10. So the men will take over, and Denise Kelly will give a mark to her teammate, Al Johnson. 
You'll see Tommy Olsen and Al Johnson bowling when Candleton doubles continues. It is a one-pin advantage for the team of Kelly and Johnson through boxes scoring. Plenty of bowling left. Please stay with us. The men will take us through the rest of the first string. And the first man to bowl is Tommy Olsen. This team is trailing by just one pin. Be able to pick that up. Here's Al Johnson, and this is the bonus ball. Top of the mark that his teammate Denise Kelly left him. A disappointing fill of only two. Bang. Mark it up. Two balls, same spot for Al Johnson. The first time it took out two pins. This time it took out Bupkis. Makes the most out of what's there. And he gets six already through pins dropped. Baldinelli and Ulster are in the lead. And Tommy Olsen has a free ball. As they say, the, the free ball gets him eight, and uh, that is all. Nudges a ninth pin, but it doesn't go. Al Johnson strikes the pocket, leaves four. Should be able to mark twice in a row. Does. There's wood to the right side that Al Johnson could use. Best he can do is go out with a 10 here in the seventh box. Makes the most of what he had left. Baldinelli and Ulster, our champions, have a nine pin advantage through six boxes. This is the bonus ball to fill. How do you do? Three marks in a row will earn him $50 in bonus money. And Al Johnson opened up his first ball, eighth box. Leaves him a tough lead. And right now, Tommy Olsen's just jumped into this match and opened it with a flurry. And the flurry has given his team ready through pins dropped. It is he's already plus 10, 95. It's already a 20-pin advantage, and he has two bonus balls to work with with the strike. Pin is Al Johnson. Tom Mosta has a free alley to the 10. Well, no matter how you get it, <laughs> run around the neighborhood. That's four marks in a row. More bonus money. And a 30 pin advantage. 30 pin lead. Bowling ninth box, first string. Al Johnson going out with a 10 in the box. Whatever mark that Tommy Olsen's on, he, I'm sure you don't want to stop. Spread eagle left. Might have broken the string. Ooh. Al Johnson thought he struck it well, did. It has a good lead. Mark stops at four. Al Johnson gets his first. This team second of this match. Tommy fills the tenth box with nine. This team is hit a 128. After after the fifth box, they had a 47. And now they are going out at a 128. Bonus ball for Al Johnson. Phyllis get get over. The crowd is slow. Get over. Get over. She's with prompting. It even didn't work. <laughs> Nine is the fill. And a 104 for Kelly and Johnson. And a 24-pin advantage for Baldinelli and Ulster as we go to the second string. Still a full 10 frames of bowling left here on Candleton Doubles. So please stay with us. The ladies are back. And so are we. We have changed alleys, and we're in the second string. 
four horsemen left, plus one remaining for Denise Kelly. Tony Marie should be able to deliver her first mark of the day. This is a, a makeable shot for Denise Kelly. I tell you what, Tommy Olsen, we just saw five boxes of bowling in which he's, his pinfall in those five boxes was 81. Oh! No, 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 it's a nine in the box. Went in the gutter and skipped back out. So nine is the pinfall for Tony Marie Baldinelli in the first box. Ralph Stewart making his first call of the day. And Denise Kelly's pinfall in the first box is nine as well. Second box, second string in our Candlepin doubles format. And our team of Baldinelli and Osta have a 24 pin lead. Each lady with a spare leave. Denise Kelly doesn't get hers again. Tony Marie going in for one lone pin. This time, this time she gets it. Her second mark of the day. And again, a 24-pin advantage as of this point, but the Baldinelli Ulster team has a bonus ball to work with, and this match has been ripped open by what Tommy Ulster did in the second half of the first string. Diamond right. Maybe. No. <laughs> now half of the diamond just collapsed. Okay, Tony Marie still is eight, and she has a leave. She could mark again. There's wood in front of Denise Kelly's shot. Actually, there's wood all around it. If she plows through it, she can come up with her mark, second mark of the day. She marked in the fifth box, her last box in the first string. She's got it. And so does Tony. I'll tell you what, that's two consecutive marks. And in the, in the first box, she came within inches of picking off the 10, which would have given them the three consecutive marks. But most importantly, the score that matters is a 33-pin advantage. There's a nice ball, nice strike, nice spill, and a nice lead. So it's a lot of nice in that ball for Denise Kelly. Hey, there goes Tony. Not the easiest of shots, though. You know, I was just going to tell you, it's not the easiest of shots, having one pin sitting down there all by itself. It's like finding the, the exact spot in the catcher's mitt in the strike zone. It doesn't happen all the time. What Tony Marie is waiting for is a pin that has decided to settle around. It's now in front of the seven. You can see it. You see it moving in front of the seven. Now it just slides a little bit off to seven. Tony's gotten her level of concentration. Two shots. She got it this time. Ten of the fourth box for Denise Kelly. And a nine of the fourth box for Tony Marie Baldinelli. Final box in this match for the ladies, barring a tie. Oh my heavens. I don't know how the diamond left is, is sitting there. That, that's Tony Marie's strike. But the pins the, the pins were struck so well and the wood as it came back was still tapping the back end. In fact, the, the eight is still wobbling. Now it goes. It's the last one to go. And again, she's handed off to her partner, Al Johnson, and Mark, to fill. The best that Tony Marie Baldinelli can do in this box is a 10. A 9 she does. So she puts a 9 up here in the pick. The 5th and the men will take over. The 28th pinned advantage through box is scored. The first ball that Al Johnson throws today will be to Phil. Throws in this string will be to Phil. All right, 
striking the pocket with so much authority that it's knocking them back over in a ricochet. The seven is going to get tapped, but it won't go over. Sir Al Johnson filled with a four, which is a low fill, but came back at oh! Al Johnson left the seven. Tommy Ulster left the ten. Johnson got his pin, and Ulster got his. The move to the seventh box and a 23 pin advantage for Baldinelli and Ulster. Seventh box, second string. We have four full boxes of bowling to go. They are certainly within striking distance. And striking is exactly what Tommy Ost has done this afternoon. He struck just about everything perfectly. That was a nice, huh? That was a nice hit by Al. It just didn't go. Oh! Tommy Ulster found the one spot between the wood that was down and the pin standing. And threw right in the gap as Ralph Stewart goes down to remove a pin that had wandered a little too far north. To get the seven. Got it. To get the pin. He got it. Each man going out with a 10, second consecutive 10. Difference remains the same, 23 pins. But we move to the eighth box. All we've done is take a box off. Which makes each of these balls infinitely more important for the team of Johnson and Kelly. Al Johnson's just bringing it too much right to left. And it's not leaving him with anything. Although the, the clump in front of him is makeable. Again, the ball's going from right to left too much. There's wood in front of two, and that's where Tommy plays his shot safely. It's a nine for Johnson. It should be a ten for Tommy Olsen, and it is. It's increased their lead by one to 24. Here we are in the ninth. Ninth box, 24 pins. And Ulster and Baldinelli, if they hold on to the lead, will move on again. Each man has a spare lead. There's wood in front of this shot for Al Johnson. Plows through it. Ulster doesn't get his. And doesn't get the 10. He gets a 9 in the box. It's a bonus ball for Al Johnson. Like a basketball free throw. No time coming off the clock and a chance to eat away at the lead, but it's a disappointing eat away at the lead. Spray Eagle is left. Phil is four. Four horsemen left side and the nine stay for Tommy. Al Johnson goes out with a 10 and a cumulative score in this string of 114. A score of 114 in this string, a cumulative score of 218. But the team of Tony Marie, Baldinelli, and Tommy Olsta. I told you the top of the show was five. Make it six. 237 to 218. That's the victory for Baldinelli and Olsta. We'll be back and chat with the winners and those who didn't in just a minute. Welcome back to Candlepin Doubles. Well, guys, what was what was it? It just a uh, quick knockout at the end of the first string, or what? Well, I don't know. It just, just happened that way. I, it was it was it was fun to watch, though, Al. Even though you're up there bowling against him, it was fun what Tommy did at the end of the string. It's fun to watch Tommy bowl any any time anywhere. He's a great bowler to watch, but when you're up against him, it's tough watching him and trying to bowl at the same time. <laughs> but uh, we had I was just off, you know. I mean, I bowled Tommy before. I'm not worried about him. Well, it, it was it was it was fun to watch you guys bowl. Thank you very much. And three hundred dollars and our thanks for making this afternoon fun because you were with us. Well, guys, I guess the only disappointing part of this afternoon was the crowd. Their get over was very late today, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It was. What are they going to say at the TikTok club about uh, the way you did it here? Huh? I don't 
I'm going, I just keep plugging for him, that's all. Yeah, so yeah. So I'm ready to go to the beach and have a drink. Well, hey, the, this guy, really, you came out of the shoot. What's he, you just feel good today, your lucky day? You're playing the lottery this afternoon or what? Well, I know how good of a bowler Alfie is, and I wanted to just jump on him and try to get us a lead and don't leave any openings. You know, but the, 80, the 81 pinfall, though, in the, in the last five boxes, that string, that was... You didn't leave him stand. You took no prisoners, you know what I mean? No prisoners. <laughs> not against Alfie. You don't do that. Well, that's not bad. Another, Not only another win, but another 600 bucks for your effort today, huh? Take it. You keep putting it in the cash register. More importantly, keep knocking the pins down, right? That's what you got to do. All right. They've got the magic. They've got the momentum. And they keep on moving along. Will they make it more? We'll see you next week and answer that question on Candlepin Doubles. For everybody at Doubles, I'm Ed Harding. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Bye-bye, everybody.